I've stumbled over some interesting stories and tales in the kettlebell sphere, and I want to share it with you. We're going to talk about Pavel. We're going to talk about my sensei, Steve Carter, and we're going to have a small discussion. So for this video, if you're interested, please comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts, your experience, because I'm always open to feedback. But before we get started, we help busy over 40s get in shape with only 30 minutes of kettlebell training per week in the next 30 days. If that's something you're interested in, check the first link in the description and download our free ebook called The Kettlebell Code. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstag. Yeah, so I've stumbled over this Reddit post where somebody was posting my review of Pavel Satsulin's new book, Kettlebell X. First of all, I am quite happy that people are talking about this stuff because it seems like what we are doing is relevant to a certain extent because it leads people to have conversations about it. And sometimes I do understand where people are coming from, even if it's negative. Sometimes I see it in a constructive manner where I even see the flaws myself or I think I can improve. Now, there's one particular person in this Reddit post that seems to have been in the in-group back with Pavel in the RKC days, and he shares some fascinating insights that I want to share. They go in line with marketing of how you're supposed to push a business, and this is how we do it as well. I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit. Plus, I've also seen an interesting post about my sensei, Steve Carter, where he was doing the kettlebell swing, and then there was a person who said, wow, I haven't seen you do a heart style swing before, or am I mistaken? And and Steve gave an answer which exactly goes in line with what I believe. Of course, it's my sensei. So I took a lot of the insights and the basics of kettlebell training from him. And my mission is to help you gain a bigger understanding so you can make your own decisions, understand the nuances between the styles. And then at the end of the day, you can then make an informed decision of whether you want to join a, a program, whether wanna, you want to hire a coach or go about it on your own. And finally, I want to show you a comment that I've received on my recent Kettlebell Sport is the Worst video that also highlights the entrenched thinking that people have in their certain camps and then they're not able to adjust or not able to take feedback from an outside source lightly or they feel emotionally attacked at least that's what I'm having the impression when I read this comment. At the end of the day, I'm just a messenger with a message that I want to push. Will I make mistakes along the way? Of course. So that's why I think it is vital for you to discern on your own, make an informed decision, listen to different perspective, and then decide what you want to do with this video and with the information that's presented here. So here's the guy, his name is Athletic ADV on Reddit, who seems to have been in the inside circle. I was at another cert only a week later and was set with Pavel at dinner. Most people shy away from him, so we spoke about his vision for things and his comment at the time was that the focus was on strength with incidental conditioning, not that conditioning was ever going to be a main goal to chase. I always find it pretty funny now that he has strong first or strong endurance and a few other add-ons. Why anyone would buy conditioning advice from someone who says that cardio makes you weak is beyond me. Probably be best to get your conditioning advice from someone who loves conditioning and understands it rather than a meathead trying to flog a product that, to make some bucks. What he's essentially saying is if you want good high quality advice, talk to the specialized expert. Recently somebody asked my opinion about a certain back pain program. I said that it seems to lack some scientific credibility. Here's the thing though, I'm not a back pain specialist. So you gotta take my feedback and my opinion with a grain of salt and rather talk to somebody who has specialized in that field of work. I was part of the inner circle for years. I'm quoted in a couple of his books. I rewrote part of the manual. I even rewrote the actual testing procedure and the forms used for testing. Pavel is an interesting dude and he has a curious mind when it comes to training but it's really limited as to the lens he views training through. And that lens is clearly focused, but he knows his market will buy, as they also want to believe in the bias that there's some magic secret that kettlebells confer and some secret Russian training sauce that no one in the West knows. This is the hallmark of clever and solid marketing. In our case, we have found out, or the market responds to what we put out, that 
Folks over 40, over 50 and 60, mostly men, seem to enjoy what we put out. Understanding how the market responds and reading the signals, I am now trying to cater to this audience, cast a wider net and use so-called dog whistle copy to call out my target audience. That's why I'm saying this is for men over 40. Can a women over 20 train like this? Of course she can. But I understand that the kettlebell works like a magnet for a certain target audience. So now I want to cater to them. Same as with Pavel. He found out that a certain group resonates. Then he started pushing out content. He was starting pushing material, selling that stuff. And now people expect him to deliver on that promise. Meanwhile, the entire rest of the world trains differently and is setting world records and winning world championships. When someone comes along and says something completely different to the rest of the world, you need to ask yourself if that person has figured out something that no one else has and that is possible or if that person is just looking to make a quick buck or two. I was giving a similar feedback in my review video. Is Pavel onto something because of old research that's collected dust, but will revolutionize the fitness and sports industry in its wake? It's a possibility, though highly unlikely. So Athletic ADV, if you're watching this, I'd love to invite you to a podcast to chop it up about all things kettlebell. Now here goes what my mentor Steve Carter had to say about the heart style swing. So watch this. So this is the feedback that he's getting. I haven't seen you do a heart style swing before or am I mistaken? Now watch what he says. No, you probably haven't. And in fact, I don't consider this a heart style swing at all. In fact, I don't even know what that means. Heart style is a brand name basically and they preach using maximal tension, which I don't use and I don't agree with. But if you're talking about a two-handed swing, you're right. I haven't done a two-handed swing in a while either. So I meant an RKC high tension swing, but I see the bend in the elbow, so I guess it's not that. And this high tension thing is what Sean Mosen put out, and we keep pushing this to make you understand the difference between high volume and high tension. I love the fact that it comes up here. Yes, that's correct. I don't agree with the idea of having to lock out the elbows in the swing. Rather, I'd like to keep the load closer to my body and more centered over the center of my mass and base of support rather than extending it far out in front. That's interesting. I'll try myself. To be honest, I never have. Always extended to keep the lats engaged throughout the swing is my line of thinking. And funny enough, you keep your lats engaged in the backswing. When the kettlebell drops between your legs, this is when you build up tension in your back. I call it loading the sling so that the kettlebell really comes close to your body and then you can use the full force from your body and move your whole body into the exercise and then swing the kettlebell up. But once the kettlebell reaches the apex, approximately your chest level, who cares what happens in your arms? It's all about focus in the hips. And here's the feedback from an apparent kettlebell sport coach who was mad at the video that I put out where I say kettlebell sport was the worst. If you want to watch this, you can check out the link in the description. The reason why I show you this, it's the same feedback that I get from Strong First, RKC, hard style guys when I say something bad about their idea or their methodology. And why am I doing this? I'm not doing this to make people mad. I'm doing this, first of all, I have to put up a title that rocks some bells. So you click on it and then I give you a nuanced perspective. This is how YouTube works. And on the other hand, I'm just trying to show you some limitations according to my perspective from certain ideas. Even what I do has limitations. Of course it has. Everything that we do is limited to a certain extent, especially when we start specializing. And when I'm talking about the philosophy of somebody else, sometimes they get mad because they are entrenched in that group and they have this tribalist mentality. And it goes to show it has nothing to do with heart style or with kettlebell sport. This is just being human. Here's the next thing that you have to do. Clean and press that like and subscribe button. Share with a friend who's also interested in kettlebells. And if you made it this far, consider downloading our free ebook called The Kettlebell Code. Listen, if you're over 40, over 50, or over 60, and you want to learn about everything there is about the kettlebell, the time-saving efforts, getting in the best shape of your life with only one tool, and despite being short on time, then check the first link in the description and download it. It's 100% free.